Setting a target to place in the top three in the MotoGP standings this year, Marc Marquez acknowledges that it won't be easy to keep factory Ducati rider Ennio Bastianini behind. This season, Grassini rider Marquez, the defending champion Francesco Bagnaia, and Pramac sensation Jorge Martin have formed the big three of MotoGP, and together they have locked out the podium at Le Mans and Catalunya. However, Bastianini has been posing a serious threat to Marquez in recent races on the factory-built Desmo Sedici, and the going has grown more difficult for him on the GP23 from last year. The Spaniard has been outperformed by Bastianini 61-52 in the last three rounds, despite finishing on the podium in the German Grand Prix last weekend. The 31-year-old claims that his goal is to solidify his position rather than pursue Bagnaia and Martin for the championship as he is currently only 11 points ahead of the Italian in third place. The season has started off well so far. Though we made a few blunders, it wasn't perfect, it was still good. After finishing second at the Saxon ring, he summarised, We are third in the championship. Being among the top three in the championship can be an excellent goal to aim for, because it won't be simple to keep Enea behind. He rides quite quickly. We're going to keep competing and taking lessons from Martin and Bagnaia, the two best riders on the Ducati. They move a little quicker than we do. Grassini has helped Marquez adjust to the Ducati and the six-time MotoGP champion has done so admirably, finishing on the podium four times in the first nine race weekends and securing a factory deal until 2025. There have also been a few obvious mistakes, most notably his crash out of the lead in the Americas GP and his collision with Bagnaia in Portugal. Additionally, his one-lap pace has been inconsistent, requiring him to repeatedly pass through qualifying, even when it was obvious he had the pace to qualify on the top four rows. Despite taking pole at Jerez, his average qualifying position following Saxon Ring was only 7.4. When asked to evaluate his year to date with Grassini and Ducati, Marquez awarded himself an 8 out of 10, emphasising that he still needs to improve in qualifying to be a consistent frontrunner. Marc Marquez can go on holiday with confidence after finishing the race at Saxon Ring on the podium with his brother Alex, third in the championship standings, 56 points behind the new leader Francesco Bagnaia, and with yet another strong showing in Germany. Many predicted the 31-year-old from Severa to win the Emilia-Romagna GP, which he hasn't done since October 24, 2021, nearly three years ago. On the circuit where he won no fewer than 11 straight races from 2010 to 2021. Despite suffering a fracture in his left index finger and a severe contusion to his ribs during the intense high side of FP2, Mark was able to recover from a very difficult weekend and finish in second place in the Grand Prix. Despite this, he did not break his long fast. With this performance, the Spanish champion achieved his fourth podium result out of the nine Grands Prix that have been staged thus far, which five medals from the sprints are also added. Despite Marquez's consistent performance, which makes it tough to discount him as a viable contender for the title, the team Grassini rider does not think so. The World Cup? People discuss it with me. I've come very near to it, but you have to face facts. As the eight-time champion pointed out in an interview, there are two riders, not one, but two who are consistently faster than me and are doing better. And the reality is that I can't stay in the title fight if I have to catch up on Sunday, if I go out, or if there is this or that. I do not intend to compete for the world championship. Too many things must occur. His current aspirations are being curtailed, first and foremost, by the fact that he is holding a Desmo Sedici from the previous year and the form of Jorge Martin and Francesco Bagnaia. At the moment, Peko seems to be the strongest. He is developing inertia and exhibits mental steadiness and results. Mark stated, I think I will win more world championships, at least one I hope. The goal is to finish in the top three and it will not be easy to keep Bastianini at bay. Mark's ultimate ambition is still to add more trophies to his trophy case. When he teams up with Bagnaia in the Ducati official squad next year, the Spanish rider will already have his first real opportunity to win the ninth career title. After a year of apprenticeship with Nadia Padovani's team, this was the goal the Catalan wanted to achieve, but it wasn't his only choice. Option C was to go to Aprilia or KTM, and I thought about it. 
Both European factories are performing well, progressing and operating in an avant-garde manner and winning races. Convinced that Ducati was not scared of his potential marriage with another manufacturer on the grid, he admitted, it was a real and viable option. If I were Ducati, I would not be terrified of another brand. They are aware that Peko is the fastest rider on the grid, and they also knew that Martin would be riding alongside him if I wasn't. After that, Marquez came back to discuss his deal with the Lenovo Ducati squad and the difficulty Peko will have over the next two years as they share the box. Ducati expressed disapproval of the whole overhaul of MotoGP's concession system last year. Ducati made it plain that it disagreed with the new regulations, even though it voted to approve them. It was obviously upset, at least according to tech chief Gigi Daligna and lead rider Peko Bagnaia, that its own testing allowances and wildcard opportunities were eliminated, while competitive European rivals KTM and Aprilia received meaningful breaks. This is likely also because it correctly did not view Yamaha and Honda as immediate threats. Due to vibrations from the newly constructed Michelin rear tyre, Ducati's season got off to a slightly shaky start, even by its own enormous standards. This gave rise to a brief speculation that Ducati might be under attack sooner than anticipated and that its concession status of rank A compared to rank C for Aprilia and KTM with rank B vacant would no longer be indicative of competitive reality. In the end, MotoGP included half-term windows in this rule, with concession statuses re-evaluated at the summer break, just in case someone managed to outsmart their rivals or things grew significantly worse. A complex set of regulations governs how a factory might really implement a mid-season change in concession status. By design, such regulations provide protection against system malfunctions. Yet as we approach the first re-evaluation window, they haven't even nearly been activated. Ducati has dominated every Grand Prix podium since Maverick Vinales and his Aprilia bloodied its nose at the Circuit of the Americas. The previous time out at the Saxon Ring, it claimed a 1-2-3-4-5. That, but for Jorge Martin's penultimate lap crash, could have also included a 6. It has accumulated 95% of the possible points in 2024 thus far, having scored 96% of the maximum points through 2023 in the constructors' rankings. This has occurred in the context of Ducati's year-old machinery, which makes up half of its roster, being noticeably less competitive than it was the previous year, albeit Marc Marquez's ride on one of them helps to partly offset the loss. Concession status for the remainder of 2024 is determined by the proportion of constructor points earned between the end of the previous summer break and the beginning of the current one, which includes 20 races and 19 sprints, due to the cancellation of the Phillip Island race. Furthermore, none of its competitors have even considered altering their concession status, similar to Ducati. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe for new upcoming videos of MotoGP. Thanks for watching.